Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Emarkem Primary SBA, the February edition. Today we shall look at few questions related to the Emarkem Primary exam. My name is Dr. Sajjad Pathan and let's start with scene question number one. Of the following conditions which is not included in the list of notifiable diseases in the UK. Is it scarlet fever, necrotizing fasciitis, regional pneumonia, HIV or acute meningitis? Let's take a five second pause and then make our choice. So the right answer over here is HIV. Remember, you need to memorize the notifiable diseases in the UK. Meningitis is a notifiable disease. You have to inform the Public Health England even if you suspect meningitis. Legionella pneumonia is another notifiable disease. Necrotizing fasciitis and scarlet fever are, ne are notifiable as well. Group A streptococcus. Group A streptococcus causes these conditions such as necrotizing fasciitis and streptococcal toxic shock syndrome. These are called as systemic group A infection. Scarlet fever, you must have heard of the epidemic which has recently happened about uh, the scarlet fever in the UK. This is also, although non-invasive, is a notifiable condition. Without wasting further time, let's look at option. Uh, let's look at question number two. A patient is in shock, and you decide to give IV fluid boluses. Of the following, which color cannula will administer the fluid the quickest? Is it blue, gray, green, pink, or yellow? Let's take a five-second pause and decide our answer. So out of the following, the right answer over here is B, which is grey. If you look at this slide, it, it just highlights. You start with orange and end with purple. Orange is 14 gauge, so the wider the gauge, the faster you will give the fluid. And as the number increases, the gauge becomes narrower and narrower. The second is grey, which is 16. Green is the one which we commonly use which is 18 and pink is 20 blue is 22 yellow is 24 and purple is 26 we commonly restrict the yellow and the purples for the pediatric patients let's look at question number three a 14 year old boy is in the emergency department with a rash as shown in the image what type of hypersensitivity reaction is implicated is it type 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5? Let's take a 10 second pause and make our choice. So the correct answer over here is type 3. In the next slide, we'll see the table of the types of hypersensitive reaction. I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. Type 1 is allergic. Type 2 is cytotoxic. Type 3 is immune complex mediated. Type 4 is delayed type. If you want to remember a mnemonic, remember acid, allergic, cytotoxic, immune mediated and delayed. So in type 1, it is due to the mast cell release of histamine and is IgE mediated. And the examples are asthma, anaphylaxis, atopy, eczema, etc. In type 2, there is an antigen, there is antibody. There are two structures, type 2. This is seen in ABA incompatibility, rheumatic heart disease and good pasture syndrome. Type 3 is antigen, antibody and immune complex. So three people causing type 3 reaction. This is seen in hay fever, serum sickness, vasculitis. So any vasculitis, for example, uh, Kawasaki disease, or uh, uh, Hinoxon line purpura, IgA vasculitis, all vasculitis is type 3 reaction, and uh, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, systemic lupus, and polyarthritis nodosa. These are examples of type 3 uh, hypersensitive reaction. Let me point out something over here for you guys is 
post-streptococcal rheumatic heart disease is type 2 because it's an antigen antibody mediated whereas post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a type 3 reaction let's look at the last one which is delayed type so you get exposed and about 24 hours later you start seeing a rash or a reaction it's commonly seen with poison ivy or nickel induced contact dermatitis the tv test which we do commonly the MON2 test is an example of type 4 hypersensitive reaction. Let's focus a bit on that rash which we had seen earlier. That rash is classical of Henoxonline purpura. In Henoxonline purpura, you, ge- you get a rash on the posterior or the uh, flexor aspect of the buttocks and the legs and the foot. And uh, you will see uh, this is a systemic vasculitis. So what you have to be, uh, you need to remember that Henox online purpura is synonymous to IgA vasculitis. So it affects the kidney. You need to get a urine dip to look for, not the WBCs, you need to look for the red blood cells and the proteins. You are looking for glomerulonephritis and get a renal profile. That's all for this video, but before we move on, I want to answer the last month's question. Name the analgesic that can precipitate a serotonin reaction with SSRI, SSNRI, and name the antibiotic that can precipitate serotonin reaction or serotonin syndrome with SSRI, SSNRI, or MAO inhibitor. And the analgesic is tramadol, and many of you got it right, and the antibiotic is linezolid. The quiz for this month is a patient is brought in with shortness of breath and agitation from a pauper's party. If you look at those uh, uh, bottles over there, they are all nitrate containing substances which are commonly abused in parties. There is central cyanosis and oxygen is initiated. When you draw the blood, it is chocolate colored. What is the treatment recommended when it's the antidote contraindicated? So this is the quiz for you guys to answer in the comments below. If you're liking this series, liking this video, please hit the subscribe button, like button and share the video. I would be grateful if you can hit the thanks button and share towards making such content. Thank you so much. Write the answers in the comment below and I'll see you with the video next month. Goodbye.